Well, it seems like we just wrapped up hurricane season 2018 and boom, six months goes by and here we are at the start of the 2019 season underway today, lasting through November 30th. Now, 97% of all named systems occur within hurricane season. June 1st through the 30th. So that accounts for 3% that doesn't. Those are off season storms and already this year we've had one and that was Andrea just about two weeks ago as a subtropical storm. We're going to talk a little bit more about that coming up in just a little while. Now, hurricane season, when it gets underway on the first, it doesn't just kick off like that and we have storm after storm. Takes a little while to ramp up right in the middle of the season when we see the peak of hurricane season, which is September 10th through September 11th. If you remember last year in 2018, pretty much right on the 10th of September, we turned it on. We had a lot of named storms out there in the Atlantic, and one of them was Florence. And then it starts to taper downwards as we get this lower sun angle and cooler weather starting to build on in, and things start to dissipate out in the Atlantic Basin until it ends on November 30th. So let's take a look at those hurricane names for 2019. 21 of them here, they are on a six year rotation. And I had somebody ask me, where do these names come from? Who decides these names? It's not, not the National Hurricane Center. It's actually a very strict process overseen by the um, World Meteorological Organization. And they come up with the names, they rotate every six years. So we'll see these names again in 2025. The only time a name is removed is when it is retired, when a particular storm causes a lot of fatalities or a lot of damage, it is removed. Now the letter in the alphabet here with all these names that has been retired the most is I. Most recently, if you remember, that would be Irma. And that letter I name has been retired 11 times so far in history. So our preseason name storms, I talked about that. We already had one this year. That was Andrea on May the 20th. This in of itself was a record. So we've already broken a record before the season has even started. And that makes it five years in a row that we have had a preseason system named. If you look back in 2016, Alex, January 12th, that was actually a hurricane in the North Atlantic. And last year, Alberto on May 25th, that developed in the Gulf of Mexico and traveled the entire length of the country and made it into Canada. So very interesting. A lot of these storms are unique and very, very rare, but five years in a row, it has happened. And that broke the old record that had four years in a row, and that was back in the 1950s. So let's talk about the predictions as we stand at the beginning of the season. What do they think? What do the experts think is going to happen? Colorado State University here, Dr. Philip Klotzbach puts out his predictions several times during the season. This is his first one that came out on April the 4th, predicting 13 named storms, five of them to be hurricanes, two of them to be major category three hurricanes or greater. Now, based on the average, a seasonal average here, kind of right in line with a slightly below normal season from Colorado State University. Now, NOAA put out their own uh, forecast here about a week ago. And again, the averages right here, but they went right down the middle, pretty much falling for a near normal hurricane season out in the Atlantic Basin. Now, those aren't the only two forecasts. In fact, there are about 18 other organizations that put out forecasts or outlooks for the hurricane season. Thankfully, Colorado State University does keep track of all of these. And if you look at all of them, the majority of them do favor a normal to slightly above normal season. So that's something to watch. So why do they think that? Well, something we always pay attention to is what's going on in the other side of the world, something called teleconnections. And one in particular that I'm sure you've heard of is the El Nino cycle, the El Nino Southern Oscillation. And that's the warming of the waters along the equatorial region out in the Pacific. And this has implications on what we see in the Atlantic Basin, because when the waters are warmer in that particular area of the world, that leads to increased wind shear in the main development region where we find hurricanes developing the most in the Atlantic over into the Caribbean as well. So what is wind shear? Well, wind shear is a change in speed and direction the higher up you go in the sky. Why is that important with hurricanes? Hurricanes are vertically stacked systems. They're thunderstorms, right? They grow at the surface and they grow very, very high the stronger they get. So a hurricane is very healthy from the surface all the way up to several thousand feet up. That would be a healthy hurricane. When you introduce wind shear to the equation, those thunderstorms build up and the winds increase with height, blows the tops 
right off of those developing thunderstorms, essentially choking off the hurricane before it can really develop and strengthen and mature. So the increased amount of wind shear from an El Nino would lead to lower hurricane activity. This year, there was forecast to be an El Nino. Not really seeing that out there. In fact, it's kind of been diminishing. As we look at the water surface temperatures, sea surface temperatures, that's another big component because we need warm water to help facilitate the growth of tropical systems. And what you're looking at here is a lot of reds, oranges, and yellows. That's very warm water. In fact, as a whole, the Atlantic Basin is running at or a little bit above average in terms of its sea surface temperatures so far this year. And that includes the main development region. This is where at the peak of hurricane season we see the most storms develop. They develop out towards the, the east and they head west towards the windward and leeward islands. This area is a hotbed for activity. Switching it up here to show you the areas in the Atlantic that are actually above the threshold to facilitate tropical development. And this is water temperatures anywhere from 79 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. It's in centigrade here, 26.5. But you see there's a wide area. And as this season matures, these levels are only going to grow northwards and encompass more of the Atlantic. So conditions only get better the farther you get into the season. So there's a lot of stuff to watch, a lot of moving parts with a hurricane season forecast. So we'll watch it, obviously, as we head through the rest of the season for you. If you have any questions, always love to hear from you on social media. You can find me on Facebook or on Twitter.